Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Before we get started on the video today, I wanted to know how different the format is gonna be for this video. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you probably have watched the show. You know that the first time you watch it, it's a lot of information and more likely than not, you probably missed a few clues. So because of that, I ended up not talking as much as I wanted to because I was too busy just watching the show and absorbing all the information. Ideally, that's not how I want to have a commentary video to be like. So it was a little upsetting. I was thinking of scrapping the project altogether, but upon editing to see what I could salvage, I noticed that I did miss a lot of clues. So I'm going to be interjecting myself onto those scenes because when I looked at those scenes, I was like, how did I miss that? In my opinion, I feel like this show is a lot more fun after the first watch because of that aha moment. I'm gonna bring it back to filming day. Happy New Year, happy 2021, woo! Well, I hope it's gonna be happy, so let's, let's hope. As you can see by the title, I'm going to be watching Over the Garden Wall. I said that I was not gonna do another series. Well, over the Garden Wall is short. That being said, I literally know nothing about this show. I've definitely heard of the name, but plot, characters, I know literally nothing. From the looks of the animation, looks Cartoon Network. I'm pretty sure it's Cartoon Network. And as you can see, the decor has changed. And I thought it was fitting because Over the Garden Wall, vines. So without further ado, Let's get started. All right, this is episode one. Okay, right off the bat, when I was just watching the scene, I was not really absorbing the information because I was like, I don't know anything that's happening. Like I have no context, so nothing made sense. But upon editing, I was like, these are literally scenes before Wirt and Greg showed up. So like, yeah, like Lorna rearranging the bones, Beatrice at the beginning when she was still human. I missed all of that. Look, even the woodsman and her and his daughter. I can't believe I missed all of that. Pretend. Oh, I was right, it is Cartoon Network. But I think the very worst name for this frog is... Wait, wait a second. Are they lost? Oh, fuck. In the woods? Into the woods. Dun, dun, dun. I can leave a trail of candy from my pants. Though I am lost, my wounded heart resides back home in pieces okay. strewn about the graveyard of my lost love. Okay, man. You need to cool down on the angst. You guys are lost, right? A, a bird's brain isn't big enough for cognizant speech. Hey, what was that? We were just two lost kids trying to get home. Well, welcome to the unknown, boys. You're more lost than you realize. I haven't heard Christopher Lloyd's voice in forever. I honestly didn't even know he's he was still working. What is your work exactly? Everyone has a torch to burn, and this here is mine. This guy sounds loony. Maybe we should make a break for it, if we can. But he must know the woods really well, so we may need to knock him out first. Except that may turn out really badly, huh? Yeah, bad, bad. This boy must have anxiety from the way that he talks, because I talk like that a lot. Do you think there really is a beast out there? Or is, is that guy just messing? Wow, I just love the way this boy is shaped. Both sides of him looks like a butt. Sometimes I feel like I'm just like a boat upon a winding river, drifting away from where I want to be. Who? I oh, oh my God. This man is going into an inner monologue. I'll be back soon for your plan. <laughs> How much candy does he have? Now, where did that frog named Kitty go? Whoop! I tripped on my own candy trail. Huh. The script is kind of interesting. Like, I didn't expect the other boy to, like, talk about a cognizant bird the other time. So interesting. Hmm. Is that... Whoop! Wart? He's so cute. You have beautiful eyes. Oh, fuck. Where's your brother? Uh -huh. Bro. Hot dog. Oh, fuck. This case always says all it has. Huh? Oh my god. Why did you do that? That was your plan, remember? Knock him out. Uh, no, the bad plan. I told you to forget that plan. <laughs> spank. 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 Yes. Good decisions. <laughs> Oops. Oh! The mill is destroyed. The oil. All gone. Oh my god, this man tried to help them out, then they led the beast to his house, and then destroyed it. His livelihood! The dog! That is not the beast! You're always messing up, Greg. Boy, fear the beast! 
and leave these woods if you can. Hmm, that was okay. That was an interesting first episode. Okay, I kind of don't know what's going on. So they got lost in the woods, then they got help, and then they attracted a beast. And I guess the beast is going to come back. It's like a recurring dark... I'm not good at analyzing guys, so do not come after me, but I'm not gonna go through the whole like, oh, the beast is the darkness within his heart. Did not think the beast was gonna die that way. But then again, Cartoon Network is not afraid to get terrifying. Like, have you seen Courage the Cowardly Dog? Okay, this is episode two. Have you listened to anything I've been saying? For the last couple hours, I've been saying... <laughs> I hear something! It's probably nothing. Hey, look. Oh my god. He just dismisses, like, everything. Help me out of here and I'll owe you a favor. You two are lost kids with no purpose in life, right? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> my name's Greg. What's yours? Beatrice. My brother's name is Wurt. Who cares? <sighs> so is it nice being a bird? Nope. Oh. <laughs> this bird does not want to be here. Hey, not to be obnoxious, but an abandoned ghost town doesn't seem like it's going to be that useful getting you guys home. Okay, I feel like when Beatrice kept pushing them to go see Adelaide, I should have been sus suspicious. But I think at the time, I was thinking like she was really creeped out by the town, so she just wanted to leave. Not the fact that she had like any ulterior motives for going to see Adelaide with them. The one time I don't have my thinking cap on is for this show where I literally could have been making predictions on what was going to happen. Hmm? Hmm? Oh my god, Midsummer? Wait, actually, oh my god, that's a little scary. Would you care for this dance? No thanks. No thanks, no thanks. I said no thank you. <laughs> she can just fly away if she wanted to. Aren't you a little too... Early? It doesn't seem like you're ready to join us just yet. At the time of filming, I thought she meant like with their costumes because they weren't wearing like pumpkin heads or whatever. Editing through this episode, I didn't find any other hint that they were skeletons. But I feel like this could have gone like in a ghost route. Like still in a dead situation, but not skeletons. Like perhaps they were ghosts. But other than that, I don't think I would have guessed that they were skeletons at all. You come to our town, you trample our crops, now you want to leave. Uh, yes. Maybe, maybe, maybe you should have listened to your younger brother and listened to the bird. I sentence you to a few hours of manual labor. Wait, what? Okay, I didn't expect it to be like that. It's kind of sub subverting my expectations on like where it's gonna go. I thought it was gonna get a lot darker, but... Why do they even have you digging these holes? Oh my god, they're digging their graves! Maybe they're gonna bury you out here. Oh my god, me and the bird are the same, hey, have the same mind. I'm tired of this, Grandpa! That's too damn bad! We were getting rid of the rocks and... Huh? Huh? <laughs> oh my god! You know, they, they, they got in the way. They're all skeletons. I guess we're even now, huh? You're not honor-bound to help us anymore. Oh, I wish, but you weren't actually in any danger with those weirdos. Then you still have to help us get home. I got it! Stop using her! Interesting, interesting episode. Yeah, I don't know. Like every time I think it's gonna go somewhere, it doesn't. I totally didn't think that those pumpkin people were skeletons underneath. Okay, this is episode three. I gotta say, I kind of, I kind of like the old timey intro music and style. And nobody is singing anything anymore. And we're keep moving. But I have to. Uh, all right. <sighs> Bert, let's go. Come on. Sorry, sorry. Greg, don't you want to be more like your brother? Just always doing what you're told? Huh? Just a pathetic pushover who relies on others to make all his decisions? She roasted him so hard. Fine. See, Greg? No willpower whatsoever. <laughs> that doesn't really sound that fun. Yeah, stay yourself, Greg. School? Psh, not today. Once the bell has rung, class has begun. No, he doesn't have a brain. He can't learn anything. <laughs> Let's go work. Come on. Here, boy. Oh, did you say something? I, I can't hear you because I'm too busy doing what I'm told. See, I'm a pushover, remember? I have to do what she tells me to do. Oh, Bro. Your brother could be in trouble. Yeah, exactly. Go look for your... 
Oh. Bluebirds have a short lifespan. You two are literally killing me every moment I'm forced to spend with you. I got enough nonsense from that no good to Tommy low down handsome man of mine. Oh, Jimmy Brown, why did you have to leave me so? <laughs> a is for the apple that he gave to me, but I found a worm inside. Ooh, that lady's got some bad. Oh my god, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say the same thing. I was like, that woman's going through it. Let's play two old cat. Here's one old cat. Hey, Jeffrey, I think there's one behind you. Was it the beast? <laughs> oh. oh. They all look so sad. Oh, potatoes and molasses. If you want some. This voice actor's voice is so cute. Greg is a natural born leader. Honestly, just follow him. I thought we were trying to do important work here. Teaching animals to count and spell. This. <laughs> And this. Oh no, man! Animals playing instruments is pretty impressive too. Oh my God, they're depressed. I just wanted to have fun, change the world, and make it a better place. But I just made everything worse. Deep down in your heart, you're a stubborn jerk. When are you gonna give this up? Maybe never. Maybe I'll never give this. Up. <sighs> if only something. They didn't have a spare bed for him. Wow. All these fine people giving out of the goodness of their hearts. Oh, not like my Jimmy Brown. Oh. Girl, forget him. Whoa! Oh, is it Jimmy Brown? Got a job in the circus so I could finally buy you that wedding ring. But when I got stuck in the dang suit, everybody was too doggone scared to help me out. Jimmy Brown being in the gorilla suit and being in the circus was literally in the first scene of the show. I can't believe I missed that! Oh, potatoes and molasses. That was a cute episode. Wait, I really like that one. Like, sometimes I can say mean things like that bird, but then other times I'm kind of like Wirt in the way that like, I'm also pretty stubborn. Do you know how to make eggs from a duck? I'm hungry. That driver is nuts. Mmm, nuts. Phew, wow. I do the same exact thing when I see a duck like in the wilderness. If I'm like at a park and I see a duck, I'm just like, mm. Dinner. <laughs> that man lost his whole inventory. These two sweet kids and I got a bit lost in the- <laughs> oh. It's a bad omen when a bluebird enters through your door. Curse you, you'll die someday and I'll laugh. Laugh! <laughs> He's the butcher. I'm the butcher. The baker. Yeah! And I'm the tavern keeper. Who are you? I, I, I don't know. I don't really like labels. I'm just sort of like myself, you know? <laughs> Elisha Wood's doing a really good job being like the, like an awkward boy. Like I really like his voice acting. When the bluebird was like, when you die, I'll laugh. <laughs> She's so funny. I think she's my favorite. What kind of person goes out chopping trees in the middle of a thunderstorm at night? What kind of person talks to a horse? <laughs> hey, if you can speak, maybe he can speak. I was wondering if you knew the way, uh, I mean, I, I'm, her name is Adelaide and- Oh, it's a girl you're after, eh? Are you not the witless, simple-minded fool everybody takes you for? Everyone thinks <laughs> I'm- You're the young lover. What? The cobbler can attend to that. Meanwhile, you must have cake. The baker and patissier need work, for goodness sake. This is really what older adults do whenever you mention, like, any name and they're like, oh, Boyfriend or girlfriend? Like, chill out. Yeah, love us. Sing us your love song. Love song. Hey. Oh. I was gonna say, he might have stage fright. We're related because my mom remarried and then gave birth to him with my stepdad. Oh, they're half brothers. No, you're a pilgrim. A pilgrim? You're a traveler on a sacred journey. You're the master of your own destiny. The hero of no story. A pilgrim. <laughs> I mean, good for him because he was saying how he was, he was feeling like a boat on a windy river. Maybe this label will be good for him. Give him a little purpose. Ooh, a better beware. Ooh, the beast is out there. Give me a lesson, you corpses of cheer. Beastles of He'll turn you to a tree of oil and use you in his lantern for to- Ooh, is the- Oh, is the beast the woodsman? Can you give us some directions? You don't need directions, pilgrim. You follow that compass inside your heart. Uh, no, I think we need directions. <laughs> or I'm just gonna pretend like I can ride you, all right? Beatrice! Wow, Beatrice? pretend to ride, but he's riding pretty well. The beast is upon you! Oh my god, a forest fire! Okay, so I really like the design 
of the ominous faces on the trees because at first I was just like oh that's just to make them like look scary to fit the vibe of like the beast and like the unknown you know but later on you learn that the trees are made of lost souls so those are literally the faces of the lost souls that's such a nice detail i really like that what was amazing he's saying a song oh so they're they're, they're just taking the horse in beatrice meet fred the horse nice the horse oh he does talk be sure to keep it lit or your daughter's flame will go out forever now what direction i knew it it's too convenient for the woodsman to just be the beast hmm i wonder what happened to his daughter Ooh, mad love what's gonna happen this one the money takes my mind off my troubles the deep soul crushing loneliness we need money you're scamming him i was thinking more like flat out stealing from him what we already stole a horse fred's a talking horse he can do whatever he wants i want to steal <laughs> only two cents yeah we need two pennies to take the ferry to adelaide's pasture let us retire to the parlor and enjoy my unnecessary excess of wealth and luxury <laughs> it's like that statistic that there's like a certain limit that you reach when you make money and then after that you just start losing happiness so i looked up that study because as i was saying this i was like i don't think i said that right the study says that at like 70 75 000, your happiness doesn't increase but the lower your income the worse you feel so yeah i happened upon a section of the house i didn't even recall building <laughs> that funny i saw the painting of the most beautiful woman i've ever seen <gasps> and the cut's back at this point, I was trying to think of what kind of crazy thing would happen. I totally thought this was going to be a Narnia situation and they were going to end up somewhere else. Check the lining. Maybe somebody sewed money into the fabric. Well, I've done it on my clothes. You wear clothes? When I was a human fool. <gasps> she used to be human? Does that mean the horse used to be human too? It's stuck. Well, guess we have to spend some quality time together. Help! <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't freak out that he was stuck in the cabinet. I feel like normal people would be freaked out. Ah! 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 Uncle Endicott, it's just a funny chicken. It's one one chicken. Look at all those chickens. I threw a rock at a bluebird and it cursed me and my family and now we're all- oh, Wow, that tavern lady was right. Is that why you're going to Adelaide? All I know is I am never going back till I can make them human again. I'd do pretty much anything. It's so interesting how much I can- dismiss what a character is saying like in actuality her words could have so much meaning in them when she said she would do anything for her family i didn't think she meant she would do anything with her family like sell greg and we're off to adelaide you know i kind of thought what she said was a hyperbole like how people say i would kill for a burger it kind of just goes to show how subtle yet in your face these hints can be i have this crush on this girl mm-hmm Ooh. I have this crush on this girl, and I think about her a lot. Are these two gonna fall in love? French Rococo style. That doesn't really seem in line with Endicott's Georgian sensibilities. <laughs> I laugh, but Wirt was onto something that I was not. This is the most human interaction this man has had in probably a while. Oh my gosh, she's real? Your guys' mansions are so huge. They're actually connected. So you mean that beautiful ghost was really just the dashing specter was really just my business, business competitor? competitor? Business competitors to lovers is just a variation from the enemies to lovers trope. They're really checking off the YA components of this show. You're a sweet boy with good sense. Take this penny and start. Bruh, just a penny? And here's one from me as well. What about you, Fred? Are you coming with us? No thanks, I've got- Oh, Fred's not gonna come with? Oh! Cause Uncle Endicott pegged me all wrong. I've got no sense. No sense at all. <laughs> Have I been naming the episodes? I don't remember. Well anyways, this is episode 6. <laughs> Were those cockroaches? Our journey is finally over. Pretty soon I'll be back home. And you won't have to put up with us anymore. Bet you're pretty happy, huh Beatrice? Oh. oh, she's gonna miss you guys. Yeah, she probably will miss them, but it's like, that's not, that's not what she was worried about. I was so far off the mark. Adelaide, Adelaide. Come 
come on and join the Adam Lay parade. A lot more music in this show than I expected. Finally going home. Whoa, that frog was huge just now. What's with George Washington being naked? Wait, oh my god, it's just processed that these are all frogs. You take him, not me! Ah! Sorry. Tadpoles! Oh. Oh. oh my god, they're babies! Oh, he stepped on them! <laughs> Stepped on one of them, no. Good day, gentlemen. We, I must be going now to join the band. Don't draw attention to us. Oh. <laughs> wow, these men are just eating good. <gasps> no bassoon player. You should play it. Go ahead, you'll do fine. Seriously, nobody wants to hear me play. I do. <laughs> I do. Just do it. What else can you lose? Get kicked off? At night, oh. when the lake is a mirror, Huh? A single. He just needed the spotlight. Thanks for supporting my bassooning. The best part is, we're still on track to get to Adelaide. Come on, keep playing, keep playing. You don't seem thrilled. Well, I just, I don't want you to. Never mind. I knew it. She likes spending time with them now. Carries their reverie. Softly it falls by a house. They do not care about his nudity. <sighs> I knew you were special. Greg always sees the best. Looks like they're hibernating in the mud. Oh my god, with their clothes? Jason Funderburger comes out of nowhere and whisks her away. <sighs> Jason Funderburger, that guy. Dinkelberg. Sounds like you're a real loser back home. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> oh my god, a record contract. That's so cute. Maybe it is better to stay here. Great, then it's agreed we're not going to Adelaide's. Good night, Wirt. He you woke up from that. Did you bring me what I asked for? I found two brothers lost in the woods. I want a child servant. Servant? <laughs> I give you the scissors. To snip, snip, snip your family's wings away to make them human again. Oh my god, that sounds horrific. What if I became your servant? You can turn me into a human, can't you? Oh, is she gonna turn human now? Welcome home, children. Huh? Ah! Oh, but I, I thought we were friends. I do as he commands, the voice of the Ooh, night. it comes back to the beast. Uh, uh, what do you mean? The nightmare is poisoned. Huh? Wirt, Greg? I knew that Wirt used the scissors to cut themselves out but i also thought at the time that he left the scissors behind like i didn't think he took the scissors with him it wasn't what it looked like i was just please come back oh i shouldn't have trusted anyone benjamin franklin <laughs> oh you didn't want a record deal oh the episode ended kind of sad hopefully the next episode they will resolve that misunderstanding i don't need beatrice i'll, I'll figure this out on my own Oh, that's good. I'm glad you have a plan. Mm -hmm. I do have a plan. And if you don't trust me, then you don't have to follow me, okay? You can do anything you want. Anything? That's a lot of power. That is a young child. Fall ill or lose hope, and your life shall pass into his crooked hands. <laughs> <laughs> Woodsman. Huh? We should talk. I want to see what the bees looks like. So, like, in the first episode, I thought that the big wolf thing was the beast. It's just, like something we haven't seen before a little dark figure it's kind of funny finding a basket of turtles in an abandoned house huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> greg not that kind of funny huh? <gasps> <gasps> oh my gosh she's so pale hide yourself at once auntie whispers is coming soon oh my god oh my gosh she's massive has anyone come here today no auntie not a soul then no one shall be devoured alive tonight i can smell the children in this house what children? I I'm like in high school. Yeah, well, you. I was wondering how old they were. The ringing of. So okay, so where is in high school? Oh my God. And you, Lorna, you shall sort the bones of those who have been eaten here before. Keeping you busy is the only way to keep the evil spirit from driving you to wickedness. When she said this, it seems so blatantly obvious. But of course, you know, I fell for it. I thought the person eating people was Auntie Whispers. I totally thought this was a Mother Gothel situation from Tangled. Like Auntie Whispers wanted to protect Lorna from wickedness 
for like her purity's sake, you know, to keep herself pure. Not because Lorna was possessed by an evil spirit. Come out my turtles. She sleeps. Wow, I like your voice. It's very calming. If I help and, and we get the work done fast, maybe you can escape with you? Yeah. Oh wow, he forgot about Sarah real quick. Something weird is going on. It's called love. I'm so stupid. I couldn't have been any more wrong. The two of us, like ships, like ships upon a winding river. And yet somehow. My god, that's kind of cute. Oh, that's kind of cute. I kind of like the song. But what about Beatrice? Is she not like a potential love interest? Are they just friends? The ringing of the bell, come on. Uh, it were. She will devour. Oh, Lorna is the one that will eat. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry, my turtles. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. The ringing of the bell command. I thought the frog ate it. Stop making Lorna do bad stuff, spirit. And also go away and don't come back. Wow. The ant couldn't have thought of that earlier. Perhaps I'll see you again someday. I hope so. Aww. I just don't know what I'm doing out here anymore. I don't know if we'll ever get back home. All hope will soon be lost. There is only the forest, and there is only surrender. Hmm. But what about Beatrice? Go back for her! Oh, this is episode 8. Babes? Babes in the wood? Is it gonna be Beatrice? Or are they talking about actual babies? Or are they talking about, like, a pig? Is a babe. Home! Home? Home! Oh, Greg is definitely gonna sing a song with that ukulele. Did you know that dinosaurs had big ears? No. <gasps> no, not the ukulele! Never mind. It must be the beast out there. The obsidian cricket of our inevitable twilight singing our requiem. Can we admit we're lost for good? You can't lose hope, we're... Do you even know why we got lost in the first place? It's because you were goofing around and getting into trouble like you always do. Really? It was all my fault? It's not my job to get us home, okay? I'm done. Word. Are you saying I should be the... Yes. What are you gonna be? A Obviously. follower. Thanks for trusting me, Word. Don't worry, I won't let you down. Oh, Greg's so cute. Oh my god, the animation for these little angels. Are these angels gonna want him to stay in Cloud City? They want to keep his spirit up there and they won't let him return. This whole time I've been watching this, whenever I see Greg's eyes, like the big, just like big black dots, it just makes me think that these characters are on like LSD or MDMA because they're like, their pupils are huge. And we will be Damn, he was able to blow away cannonballs? Bert, Greg. Oh, she left to look for them. <laughs> oh, how did he do that? If you wish, I can certainly send you home, but Bert cannot go with you. He is too lost. <gasps> the beast has claimed him already. Oh, I should have been leading better. Oh. Isn't there anything I can do? Are you sure? Hey, Bert. Trying to sleep. I'm sorry I got us lost, Wirt. Okay, I have to go now. <gasps> Goodbye, Wirt. Yes. Oh my god, did he... Oh my god, he sacrificed himself? Ah! Yeah. Ah! Ah, oh, my ears! <laughs> oh, well, you're kind of fucked if you get in the ice water. <laughs> Where's Greg, Wirt? <laughs> yes, Beatrice. Oh, it's the fish. I totally forgot about a fish. For the next two episodes and for the outro, there's going to be a slight buzzing sound in the background. That's because my mom turned on the heater in the room next to mine and my mic picked it up. So I tried editing it out. It's the best I could do. Can't really do much about it. Sorry. Okay, this is episode 9. Into the unknown. Into the unknown. Is this is a flashback. Back to like home. It's okay, you don't need Sarah. You have Beatrice. Wait a minute. Why is everything so modern? I was helping old lady Daniels rake some leaves in exchange for candy. Greg, it's Halloween. Candy is free. Oh, this started on Halloween? That explains why he has a has a teapot on his head. Your tape says, for Sarah. You gonna give it to Sarah the bee? Hm, yeah, okay. I'll give it to her for you. What are you supposed to be? 
It's an elephant costume. Oh, oh, okay. I understand. That's yeah. cute. Yeah. Yeah. But I... Yeah. No, I just want to wallow in misery. <laughs> uh, typical high school. You're the total package too, Wirt. I bet she'll really like your tape. Oh, Greg's so cute. Why don't you ask Sarah out first? My life is crumbling all around me. Wirt is so dramatic. <laughs> Like, it's not the end of the world. Then again, for a teenager, it does seem like the end of the world. So I'll give him a pass. I think we should put our frog hunt on hold and go get that tape back. Yes. Everything Greg says and does is always the right choice. He should just learn from Greg. Why are you talking to them? <gasps> oh, hey, Wirt. How's it going? Uh, I think it's so interesting how unconfident Wirt is about, like, his peers and with Sarah, when it's like, they're welcoming him. Like, they want him to be there. They even asked where he was. But he just can't see it because he's just so insecure about everything. Come on, Wirt. They like you. That being said, I'm so glad I'm not a teenager anymore. We're gonna go to the graveyard. We're just gonna hang out and drink age-appropriate drinks. Like juice? Oh, hey, Wirt. <laughs> Let's go. Why does he sound like he's constipated? You coming, Wirt? No, no. Come on, Wirt. You could have, you could have gone in there. Do you believe in ghosts? Why? You believe in right ghosts. You. I really thought I killed that impression when I did it the first time. Okay, let me try again. <clears throat> Do you believe in ghosts? So she kept getting closer and closer. <laughs> is Wirt here too? Yeah, right. Over there! Huh. There he is! <laughs> Wirt, we can see you, man! <laughs> Come on! Greg is literally getting you in there. Greg is such a good wingman. You're all under arrest! Run! Hey, hey, I was just kidding! Is this how they got lost? Huh? It has my name on it. No! <sighs> Once again, you ruin my life. You and your stupid dad. You're always prodding me. If you join the marching band, you can hang out with Sarah more. That ship has sailed, Greg. Thanks to you messing that up, too. No, no, you're in there. You are in there. Stop. I didn't really express this at the time because I didn't really want to <laughs> be that mean about Wirt. But where it was really starting to annoy me, like, I get it. You're a teenager, you're insecure, you're unconfident, but you don't need to project all that anger onto Greg. Like, literally, Greg was just trying his best. And he's also a literal child. When he was starting to talk about, like, Greg and his dad, I felt like there was some, like, animosity there, as if, like, he's resentful that Greg exists or that Greg's in his life at all. That's a part of Wirt that I didn't like at all. Also, if we really want to get nitpicky here, if Wirt didn't record that tape for Sarah, then none of this would have happened. Please, he wants to blame Greg for giving it to Sarah. Well, how about you don't record it in the first place? My bad. I, <laughs> I think... I think I'm just a little too protective over Greg at this point. Also, if anyone deserves to be bullied, it should be their parents for naming them Wirt and Greg. There's an old black train coming. Greg, you get bored to take your hand next time. Oh, you're awake. Here, eat some dirt. <laughs> Oh, is that her whole Beatrice? family? Let's go find Greg. At least wait until the storm dies down a bit. You'll be no good to your brother dead. I was never any good to him alive either. Thank you. Damn. Thank you. These past few episodes without Beatrice have... I want Beatrice back. What the heck? Okay, we're on episode 10. The very last one. So I'm kind of wondering how this is going to end. I'm sure Beatrice and them are going to make up. But then what's going to happen with the beast? Maybe the woodsman's daughter is going to be released from the beast? We'll see. Did you fetch for me the golden comb? Will that work? This is a honeycomb. Golden comb of honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the beast is so sick of Greg. He's like, I don't even want you anymore. <laughs> Lower the sun out of the sky and into this china cup. Hey, yeah, that's it. Da, da, dun, 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 dun. All about perspective. That old sun's going right down into this old cup. Greg and I literally thought of the same thing. I said, it's all about perspective. So just put the cup underneath the sun and the sun will set into the cup. I could defeat the beast if I want to. 
<laughs> I'll never give up. Just gotta wait. Just gotta wait. Todd, Greg's. Just sit there in the cold. Greg's gonna die. Oh, he fixed his cabin. That was fast. I have something for you. Oh, oh, what have you done? I don't know this is where the Aywood trees came from. Feed the lantern. No. I suppose after all these years, you just don't care for her anymore. Holy This is getting a little, a little deeper. Did Greg lose hope? I thought you had to lose hope to... Well, I mean, I guess because he already gave himself to the beast. So either way. It's gonna be fine, Wirt. <gasps> oh my god. He will soon become part of my forest. I won't let that happen. Perhaps we better make a deal. I can put his spirit in the lantern. As long as the flame stays lit, he will live on inside. <sighs> okay. Oh my god, really? Is Wait, there... that's dumb. <laughs> what? That's dumb. I'm not just gonna wander around in the woods for the rest of my life. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, how are you gonna get out of that if you agree? It's almost like your soul is in this lantern. Oh my god. Here, woodsman. I've got my own problems to take care of. This one's yours. She was never in the lantern, was she, B? My god, you were bamboozled. Take that light out. Defeat the beast. <clears throat> what? You had them all along? Oh, I... I Oh, I thought the scissors were left behind. Go! Now! Ew! Ew! What was that? Are you really ready to go back to that empty house? No! Woodsman! Goodbye, Beatrice. Goodbye, Wirt. The bird to all the trees. Three. <gasps> was that supposedly a dream? <laughs> they gave a blanket to the frog. Greg, where's Greg? And then his hair about this. I don't have a tape player, so maybe we can listen to this. You can listen to it at my house. Oh, it's yes. smooth, smooth. And so the story is complete and everyone is satisfied with the ending. So I like these kinds of endings where it's like, oh, you think it's a dream, but then there's a sign where like it's possibly not a dream. The frog is still glowing from the bell. So everything that happened to them could be real and that's what i want like i i don't want it to be like oh that was all in in their minds you know Beckons through the leaves as oh my god how many years oh that makes me kind of happy i was gonna say it's a little sad that like he didn't have his daughter but then she came back honey eat your dirt the oh. damn are they just not gonna meet again Okay, so what did I think of the show? Just being straightforward with it, it was a very fun show to watch. Like, it was cute. I'm sure, like, if I really think about it and dig deep, maybe there are some themes I can find from it. I think I would recommend this show to anyone. Like, it's really easy to binge. I'm still, like, kind of amazed by the script because it didn't use, like, dumb kid vocabulary, you know? I found it interesting that these kids would talk in such a almost adult way kids would enjoy this but it's also like the script and the dialogue adults would like this as well i really like beatrice's like realness she's so blunt and i love that i tend to like blunt characters like that but she wasn't like obnoxious about it i well i didn't feel like she was obnoxious about it greg is so cute he's very Optimistic. Honestly, Wirt should just learn a thing or two from Greg. I personally don't think I talk that much during this show. I feel like with these types of shows, it's like hard to express what I'm thinking because there is so much going on and like I want to say something but then something else happens. I don't know. Like I'm trying to gather my thoughts. And it's also like with the type of commentary I like to do, I like to like make fun of things or like nitpick why characters say what they say, why characters do what they do. And honestly, in my opinion, I think this show would have been great if I just watched it on my own. But I know that a lot of people want to know what I thought about it, how I'd re react to it. But I do apologize for not saying as much as I wanted to. Because I didn't have a lot to say, it doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. I really did enjoy it and I would definitely recommend it to anyone who wants like a quick binge. Okay, so I'll give my own little outro with my thoughts the second, third, fourth, whatever time <laughs> I'm watching this through editing. I even like wrote them down to like gather my thoughts. First off, 
I know that throughout the video, I was like, oh, I want Wirt and Beastress together, you know? Like, that's my ship. But it's okay that my ship didn't come true because I think it's perfectly fine that they just stay friends. Not everything has to result in a romance. It can just stay platonic, and I'm totally fine with that. I mean... <sighs> I think it would have been cute if they did end up together, but it's not something devastating. Also, regarding the script, at the time, I couldn't find a word that could describe the script that I wanted to, and the best thing that I could come up with was self-aware. They made it in a way that it wasn't like another children's show. Like the examples of work talking about a cognizant bird or how Sarah was saying how they're all gonna drink age-appropriate drinks. Like, ugh, this is so hard for me to explain. It's a very kind of specific type of writing. Also, <laughs> I know I said I didn't want to really analyze the show, but I did, <laughs> I did write like a little, a little blurb. So I was thinking of how like the beast is kind of like a manifestation of Wirt's anxieties, insecurities, and lack of confidence. It's constantly looming over him. It always has a presence, uh, whether or not you can see it. If you fully lose hope, it will consume you. In a way, it can be akin to like, mental illnesses too, but that's something I don't really want to get into. I'm not really knowledgeable about all that, so I don't want to say something I don't know anything about, you know? Lastly, for the ending, the first time through, I had the feeling that the ending wasn't entirely happy. Even like after rewatching it through editing, it's still kind of bittersweet. Especially like when you think about it, Wirt and Greg probably don't think that their experiences were real. Like they were all just something in their minds when they were drowning. And the uncertainty of them ever meeting with Beatrice or all the other characters again. Like it's really doubtful that they would see each other again. And that's kind of sad. I think that really concludes my thoughts for this show. I hope you guys liked the video. I know it's a little different from my other videos. So if you enjoy this video, please give me a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you want, and I will see you guys for the next video.